Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, we will start with the invocation and pledge of allegiance from Commissioner Lawhon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope everyone enjoyed the 4th of July. And just um, about a month ago, we celebrated, I believe, the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And uh, back in May, toward the end of May, we celebrated Memorial Day, which represented all the soldiers and service people that have fallen and given it all for our freedom. And we celebrated on July 4th our freedom and the freedom that we have in the United States. Uh, I don't know of another country I'd rather live in. Even when we disagree with each other, we still have the freedom to be able to disagree and we still have the freedom to live a free life. And I'm thankful for that. And I hope you are as a citizen of the United States. If you would, please join me in prayer. Father, we do thank you for the freedoms that we do have. The, we thank you for the, the life that you have given us here on earth. We know that even though it may be long, it can be very short. We thank you for the opportunities it brings. We just pray that as commissioners or as citizens that we would do things that are pleasing in your sight and not in our sight. Just uh, guide and direct us as we make decisions tonight and uh, just give us the ability to make the right decisions. These things I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Commissioner Lawhon. Uh, are there any adjustments to the agenda this evening? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we add uh, consent item E to number 11. Okay, a motion to add a, a budget amendment consent item 11E uh, and a second by Commissioner Morgan. Is there any discussion on that? Uh, it's on your table, 11E. The sheriff's office. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion carries seven to zero. Item number one on the agenda this evening uh, is the 2020 Water Main Extension Program. Uh, presenter, Mr. Wingo. Thank you. Okay, seem like I've been here before. Um, the fiscal 2020 uh, water main extension program was budgeted for $240,000 for water main extensions. Um, there were six applications submitted the previous year for the community based extension program. Um, all of the applications that were submitted exceeded the $500,000 threshold that was part of the program. Um, four of those six applications have been included in the phase four water main extension preliminary engineering report that will be submitted to USDA for grant approval funding and financing in the fiscal fall of 2020, which is actually the fall of 2019. I apologize if that was unclear, but it will be this fall when the PER report will be uh, submitted. Um, these extensions will be under the Stanley County Water and Sewer Authority domain. Um, I would state also that there are no guarantees that all of these water mains will get approved by the USDA as part of the package, but we're going to put our best foot forward to try to get them all in there. Um, the two remaining uh, applications that were not included in the Phase 4 project, um, well, the reason they weren't included was because their location was not in relative proximity to the other water main extensions that were included in, in the Phase 4, and those were Coley Store Road and Webb Road. Um, in reviewing those two applications, um, it's apparent that Coley Store Road being on the western side of the county uh, is more, uh, I guess, apt to be developed, for first of all, plus it could also be included in an SDF study whereby we can use it as a, ca a future capital project to be done. Um, so that it has a lot more, I guess, opportunities for that water main extension to take place. Um, with that said, uh, the remaining project, Webb Road, 
uh, is not in the, it doesn't have the same opportunity for a water main extension and also it's located in an area that's far away from the other USDA projects which means that uh, it, it's I guess the one that uh, I would recommend based on based on that criteria so um, what I'm saying is that we you know my recommendation is let's go with the web road for the water main extension keeping in mind that we have two hundred and forty thousand dollars in the operating budget uh, will be under design we can start construction after the first of the year and what I'd like to do is uh, use the hopefully the next year's budget of two hundred forty thousand dollars in operating uh, to apply to the contract so that uh, we don't have to take out a large uh, financing package to complete the job so uh, staff would recommend to the Stanley County Board of Commissioners that we approve the uh, web road community-based water main extension application for design and funding Thank you, Dwayne. Do commissioners have any questions? Yeah, we, we had agreed, I believe, to go with the 240000 as an operating budget and do as much as we can with the 240000 in order to avoid uh, debt service because it will just keep piling on top of one another if we try to do these large projects every year. So that said, I'd like to spend the 240000 on Web Road and then for next operating budget, assuming we, and, I, and hopefully we'll have more than $240,000, we may be able to complete the whole thing without doing any, uh, you know, taking money out of retained earnings just to come get it completed and be done. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? What do we want to do with this? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we go with Mr. Wingo's recommendation to start Web Road and hopefully complete it next year. Motion by Commissioner Lohan to accept the staff recommendation. Uh, second by Commissioner Allman. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. I would just make a note to the board that you know that there is funding for that the operating budget this year. I think when we um, we may want to consider or the board may want to consider um, either retained earnings uh, to match with that this year or um, taking some money from the operating uh, general fund um, from reserves there just to finish out the project and get it all done for the estimated six hundred and twenty three thousand dollars it would would cost so that's something we'll likely bring back to you in August 12th uh, board meeting for a budget amendment so we can get that project completed and give you some, some alternatives well 240 is already there I would I would I would say that we, we need to look closely at closing that gap of the additional four hundred thousand whether that's with some portion of retained earnings and another portion of general fund operating money given that there's a public health concern with the wells in this area, I think it uh, would be more than appropriate to, fin to, to take some of the general fund reserves to, to finish this project. Um, you know, if it was, if you're looking at $2 million, and maybe looking at it differently, but I think in this case, when you've got such a small amount, we'll, I think we need to bring it back to you and, and have you closely look at going ahead and getting it all done this fiscal year as one project. Thank you, County Manager. Uh, item number two tonight is the Library Board of Trustees appointments. Hollis. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here to present to you the recommendations of the Library Board of Trustees to fill the two board vacancies that we have. Uh, we had two terms that ended on June 30th. Uh, the first was Glenda Gibson. She was completing an unfilled term, and Stephanie Almond completed her first term. Both Glenda and Stephanie have started working out of the county and were unable to accept another term because their work schedules um, didn't allow for them to attend the meetings. So at our last board meeting, um, the trustees looked over all of the applicants that Tyler had sent to us. We've got a list of uh, five criteria that the, the board members 
took into consideration before making the recommendations, um, but um, it came down to they recommend Dana Glenn, uh, who is a library user. She's active in the Friends of the Library, and she does have uh, teaching experience, which will help on our board as we um, look at directions we want to take. The also board is also recommending Kimberly Marshall. Um, she is a huge library user and has brought her children and now is currently bringing her grandchildren uh, to take advantage of our library programming. So um, we would just like the commissioners to approve those or um, make their own designations. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions from the commissioners? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to nominate Dana Glenn and Kim Marshall. Dana Glenn and a nomination for Kim, Glenn, Marshall. Kim Marshall. Those are the two the library board is interested. Right. Any other nominations? All right, I'll close the nominations. Is there a motion to accept those? By acclamation. Motion to accept by acclamation those two members that were recommended by the library board uh, by Commissioner Morgan. Is there a second? second. Commissioner okay. Jordan with a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries 7 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three is the Consolidated Health and Human Service Board appointments. Uh, presenter, County Manager Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, currently have multiple vacancies on the Health and Human Services Board, mainly because there's a, um, a lot of them are designated professional positions, and a lot of times it's difficult to find those um, folks that are willing to serve from those designated professional positions, given how busy they are in their um, regular careers. Um, Commissioner Jordan had requested and recommended, recommended that we um, take action uh, to fill um, some of these seats. I may ask him to uh, interject um, and speak further uh, since he's a member of that board. Um, and I know that um, I think at least for T.J. Smith, they were, there was some consideration to appoint him to a vacant consumer seat on that board. Uh, for a four-year term um, expiring July, would essentially would be um, July 7th of 2023. Um, that consumer, because that existing vacancy has expired, they have to be reappointed for a four-year term. Uh, any of the initial terms for any of those professional seats could potentially be done for um, for two years or less, but um, the, the the consumer um, appointment needs to be for four years, given it, it's an expired term from an initial two-year term. Um, and I may, I may um, defer to Commissioner Jordan, given this was his action item that, that he was seeking um, assistance with. Thank you, County Manager Lucas. The HHS board has had five vacancies, well, has had four vacancies since its inception in 2017. Um, as the board designed to cover county health and the mental health and physical health, um, I kind of found it funny that none of the health professionals were filled out. Um, we do have a dentist, we, we do have a few other slots, but a few of the core slots have never been filled. Um, I won't go into to why I wasn't part of the board then, but um, considering it is a board of health, I think we need to have these seats filled. Uh, one ha a general practitioner has come forward and is going to be talking to the board next month, so we may be able to fill that one. Um, tonight, the ones I would like to bring up are, um, as you mentioned, uh, uh, where Chief of Police T.J. Smith for the consumer seat um, for a four-year term expiring in 2023, and Dr. Laura Harbison for the psychologist seat. And someone will have to correct me as to when that term would expire. I don't remember. I don't have my notes in front of me, but uh, I think that has to be a four-year term. Is that right? No? I think the way you've had it in listed in the agenda packet was to expire on November 7th of 2020, and I believe that's fine. And that would make it, that would keep the numbers rolling off each year fairly even. Correct. Okay. Um, 
That is my recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan. I just have one question or comment for somebody to clarify. The consumer seats expired in November of 2019. So this would be 2018, I'm sorry. So this, the, the T.J. Smith seat would be filling an unexpired term for four years? Right, but the, when we made the initial, when we set this up initially, we set it on four-year rotations for specific users. So consumers were all in one group for four years. Then we started physicians, veterinarian, whatever else the other required positions are, got three years, so on and so forth. Right. So this seat was initially a one year. That expired November, but then when you reappoint, they go to four years, was my understanding. And we never reappointed that seat. The, the member that was in it just kept filling in until reappointment. So this T.J. Smith would actually be filling that seat, which started in November of 2018. So my point is that the only difference is, is that should be November of 2022, not July 7th, 2023. Right. I think personally to make it easier for future boards, if they, they keep rotating elsewise, we run into a situation that we're going to see later with the Board of Adjustments where we start making one-year appointments to get it to where all 12 members aren't rolling off in the same year. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan, and I appreciate your work. In the interest of full disclosure to the board, the general statute says that these nominations have to come from the Board of Health. The Board of Health has not made this as a recommendation. I'm willing to support it tonight under, with the additional comment that there is no objection from the Board of Health in the future in August at their next meeting. If they don't make the, the objection in August for these two members, I'm we'll move forward. But the law says that it has to come as a recommendation from them, according to, am I correct in saying that, Jenny? So one thing I would say is the others that were appointed in November were November 5th. So if you want to keep them consistent, I would appoint these two to be November 5th of 2020. In November 5th of 2022. Are you okay with that? No, that's the that's the Laura Harberson. And if I may make a <coughs> all 
All right, to clarify for those listening, because I know some folks had mics on, some folks had mics off, um, we were clarifying a few dates. Um, Laura Harberson um, has been recommended for a position as a psychologist, psychologist um, for a term that expires November 6, 2021. And T.J. Smith has been recommended for appointment to a consumer seat which expires November 5th of 2022. That's the current recommendation. Are there any, is there any other questions from the board? I'm gonna assume Commissioner Jordan made that in the form of a motion. So moved. And is there a second? Second. County Attorney. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I believe that Mrs. Harbison's term should actually expire in 2020. Is that correct? Nope. None of the terms expire in 2020 right now. They're all 19, 21, and 22. Okay. The four, when we initially set up the Health and Human Services Board, the four vacant professional positions, it was four years from establishment of the board. Would that be 2021? Yeah, 2017. It was initially put 17. Mm -hmm. This year, this was the first full year of it in 18. Did I answer that? All right. Is there a second to that? Did I miss a second from Commissioner Morgan? Um, is there any other discussion, questions, or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries 7 to 0. Item number four, uh, Board of Adjustments, Appointments, uh, Presenter, County Manager Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm stepping in for planning to director Bob Remsburg this evening. He's on vacation. Um, the Board of Adjustment has two members uh, who have served two terms, uh, Buddy Clark and Michael Eford. Um, one member, Franklin Lee, is currently an alternate. He's eligible for reappointment. Jim Starnes is also an author who's eligible for reappointment. Um, terms expire June 30th of 2019. New appointments, two regular members and one alternate would serve through June 30th of 2022. Michael Eifer was contacted following the June 10th meeting and is agreeable to serve as an additional term if desired. We request one alternate, Jim Starnes, is currently in the role and ineligible to be appointed for a one-year term. So I'll read what Bob's note was appoint two regular members and one alternate member to the Stanley Board of Adjustment for terms expiring June 30th, 2022. Appoint one alternate member for a term expiring June 20th, 2020. Uh, Bill Franklin Lee is eligible for reappointment. Other applications include Kevin Brickman, former County Planning Board member, and Lane Peeler, member of the Meisenheimer Planning Board. Richard Cosgrove has also served on the Planning Board several years ago. Candace Brasington was appointed to the County Planning Board in January. We are recommending that Jim Starnes be reappointed for a one-year term. That will correct the rotational appointment of board members to a three per year for this nine-member board. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the county manager? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nom make a nomination. Mr. Morgan. I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Michael Eford. Um, Richard Cosgrove and Billy Lee remain in the alternate position and then Jim Storms with the alternate for the one year term. So Michael Eford for a two year appointment. Mm -hmm. What was your second one? Richard Cosgrove. I'm sorry, um, one of the two regular board members yep. for a three year term. And then your alternate was who? Billy Lee. Remaining his current alternate, and then Jim Storms for the one year. Yeah. For the alternate one year seat of Jim Storms. Any other nominations? Chairman. Mr. <coughs> Lawhon. I'd like to nominate uh, Shannon Maynard to a two year term. And I would also like to nominate Franklin Lee. 
the alternate would be Richard. All right, so currently I have two nominations for each of the two regular member seats for a three-year term. Uh, Michael Eford and Shannon Maynard, uh, Richard Cosgrove and Billy Lee. Uh, I also have two nominations for the alternate position uh, with Richard Cosgrove and Billy Lee. And then the one-year alternate position to balance out the board would, was Jim Starnes. The only nomination I have for that, is that correct? Are there any other nominations? Yes, sir. Uh, the one year swap out. And I'm trying to nominate citizens that don't serve on boards currently. Lane Peeler. I'm sorry, Commissioner Lawn, I didn't hear you. Lane E. Peeler. Lane Peeler, thank you. Sorry Eisenheimer, about that. Eisenheimer, North Carolina. All right, so there's two nominations for each seat. Uh, this evening. Um, since some of the nominations are both for the, the regular member seats and the alternate seats, we'll handle each seat individually. Um, the first one we'll do is the appointment of a regular member seat for a three-year term. This will be the nominations of Michael Eford or Shannon Maynard. All those in favor of Shannon Maynard, please raise your hand. And that's three, I've recorded three votes. All those in favor of Michael Eford, please raise your hand. I record four votes. Second three year seat for a regular member uh, is a nomination between Billy Lee and Richard Cosgrove. All of those in favor of Billy Lee, please raise your hand. I'll actually record myself as a yes to that as well. That's a three vote. Billy Lee for the regular seat. This is for the perm this is for the regular member seat. That is I'm recording six votes for Billy Lee. Any opposed please raise your hand or any, all those in favor of Richard Cosgrove, please raise your hand. I record one vote for Richard Cosgrove. So the alternate seat for the three-year term, since Billy Lee has a full-time seat or a full seat, would only leave Richard Cosgrove. All those in favor of Richard Cosgrove, please raise your hand. Record a vote of seven. The alternate seat for a one-year term is between Lane Peeler and Jim Starnes. All those in favor of Lane Peeler, please, please raise your hand. I record one vote. All those in favor of Jim Starnes, please raise your hand. Tommy, how do you vote? <coughs> okay. Record six votes for Jim Starnes. So the two regular seats should be Michael Eford and Billy Lee. 
Richard Cosgrove serving as a three-year alternate, and then Jim Starn serving as a one-year alternate. Yes, sir. Pursuant to a conversation we had uh, another time, do we ha do we currently have a regulation on a member not serving on more than two boards? Jim Starnes is on two now, right? What's he on? Jim Starnes is currently an alternate on the Board of Adjustment and the Board of e Equalization and Review. He's what? On the Board of Adjustment and the Board of Equalization and Review. This is Board this of is Adjustments. Oh, never mind. So this would be the same board. Okay. I got you. Never mind. Jim Starnes will remain in the one-year alternate seat. Tyler, I wrote that down in case it's clear as mud. <laughs> All right, item five tonight is the Central Line of Region F Aging Advisory Committee appointment. Presenter, County Manager Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Attached, there's a letter from the Central Line Council of Governments concerning the county's appointment for an individual to serve on the Region F Aging Advisory Committee. We get all of our, a lot of our senior um, health and human services funding, especially through the health and human services block grant. Um, that Region F Advisory Committee um, meets and discusses um, those funds and um, the allocation of those. Mr. William Rigsby is the current delegate appointment to that board. Mr. Rigsby is eligible for reappointment and willing to serve. Um, consider the appointment and reappointment of a delegate to serve on the Region F Advisory Committee is the action we're asking the board to take. Um, looking to see and the information's in your packet. This is a, this has been a, historically a different, difficult one to, um, to appoint. And so all we have is um, Mr. Rigsby at this point in time who's willing to serve as an, another year as an alternate. I know from other discussions this board is, this board seat is very hard to fill. It, it meets in Charlotte. Yeah. People have to drive there. Um, and Stanley County is not heavily represented at the meeting. So if Mr. Rigsby is willing to fill that seat again, I vote we do it and thank him for we're offering. We need somebody on that board. All right, there's a motion from Commissioner Jordan. Second. Is there a second? Commissioner Morgan um, to reappoint uh, Mr. Rigsby to the Aging F, Central Line Region F Aging Advisory Board. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, I want to take a quick moment to go back to item 3, the Consolidated Health Mr. and Human Services. Chairman, may I uh, yes, sir. speak just a second on this board that Mr. Rigsby's on? We do have two other folks from Stanley County, and we do appreciate them going to those meetings in Charlotte. And uh, that is Ms. <coughs> Abernathy and Dr. Johnny Woodard. So I'm glad they also go. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Item three, uh, the county attorney has gone back and reviewed some minutes. Um, the seat, the Laura Haberson seat that was set to expire, I think we said 2021, was correctly stated as 2020 originally because we left those four vacant seats open according to the prior minutes. Right. When we initially established the board, the four vacant professional seats had a term of three years. When we staggered everything, so the initial term for those would expire in 2020 because that's the initial term for the professionals. So thereafter, it would be four years. Terms. So I think the term of Mrs. Harbison should actually in fact expire in 2020 rather than 2021 based on the minutes. <coughs> Chairman, I don't have a problem with that either way. We have had a hard time finding a psychologist to get on that board. I think if she's okay doing it, she'll be okay doing it to 2020 and then again for four more years, hopefully. I think the intent is just to get our rights and our correct rotation down. Um, 
County manager. The only thing I would say, if you do that, you're going to have one person hanging out there in 2020. The rest of them will be 2020. Not, they'll either need to be reappointed in 19, 21, or 22. So I don't think, I don't think, I think the board can. Correct, unless we fill those other four seats. Cor correct. That's yeah. true. So um, then they would still be in rotation. Optimistically, we would fill those seats. Yeah. I don't admit I have no preference. I'm just trying to keep it consistent. So I mean, but if, if you want to do 2020, that's that's fine. Instead of a vote, can we do just without objection? Is there any objection to changing that date from 2021 to 2020? See no objection. I'd like that changed in the minutes. And that takes us back to item number six: the jury commission appointment, uh, County Manager Lucas. Uh, the term of the jury commission appointment um, for Mr. William Eford expired on June 30th of 2019. He's got a work-related conflict where he's not in town um, or he's, he travels for work now and it's more difficult for him to make meetings. Um, and so the county's commissioners appoint one member of the 30-member jury commission. Uh, the other members are appointed by the clerk of court and the senior resident superior court judge. Um, the com commission meets at irregular times two to three times a year, so that's why it's difficult unless you, you, know, you know exactly when they're going to meet. For, um, it's been difficult for Mr. Eifer to make those meetings. So the appointments are for a three-year term. Uh, there are some applications in the packet for your review and consideration. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to nominate Tate P. Daniels. nomination of Tate Daniels. Is there any other nomination? <coughs> Seeing none, is there a motion to accept Tate Daniels as the appointment? Motion from Commissioner Lawhon, I think. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Furr. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries 7 to 0. Item number 7, the Central Line of Economic Development District Appointment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The county typically appoints the EDC director to serve on the Central Line of Economic Development District Board that meets through the Central Line of Council of Governments. Uh, each term is for a period of three years. The CEDD meets monthly at the Central Line of Council of Government offices in Charlotte. And I would ask the board to consider the appointment of Ms. Candace Louder, excuse me, um, for economic development director as the economic development director for the CEDD. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morgan. I make the motion we approve uh, Candace Louder. A motion by Commissioner Morgan, a second by Commissioner Jordan. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries seven to zero. Item number eight, the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Annual Conference Voting Delegate. County Manager Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. You've got a letter or an email in your packet from the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners for their um, conference that will be held in August the 22nd through the 24th. Um, August the 24th, that Saturday is when the business meeting will be held from 2 to 4, uh, and the county, um, it's recommended, would appoint a, del a voting delegate to attend that business meeting and be able to vote on behalf of, uh, of Stanley County. Meetings in Greensboro. I guess we should start with who all is available that day. I'm planning to go. Planning to go. Commissioner Long. Is there anybody else planning to go that day? In the interest of selecting a delegate. I'm not planning to go. I'm told I do have another meeting that same day. I have another committee that's sort of on the All right. So there is a motion to um, nominate Commissioner Lawhon as the voting delegate. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Furr. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries.
Uh, item number nine is the North Carolina DOT resolution of support um, in conjunction with Project Blue Sky, Permissioner Presenter, County Manager Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, we were asked by the North Carolina Department of Transportation to uh, lend support to um, their seeking additional funding for road infrastructure for Project Blue Sky. And I think what's occurring is they're looking to find additional resources from other pots of money uh, at the state level. And so they've asked us to consider a resolution um, in support of um, that request uh, by the local Division 10 to the Board of Transportation uh, at the state level. So I'd ask the board's consideration of this resolution. Any questions for the county manager? Is this an addition to the road work that's already to be done, or is this uh, helping out on what's to be done? This would help to accomplish what's already planned to be done. Uh, all the safety improvements um, associated with several of the, the roads that um, are adjacent to the to the site. And so this would be this is they're seeking additional funding based on revised um, engineering estimates. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion we consider and approve the attached resolution of support. Motion to approve the resolution by Commissioner Jordan. Second, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Allman, I believe. Um, any other discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, item number 10 tonight uh, is recognition of a few EMS employees, uh, Mr. Mike Smith. Good evening, Chairman, uh, members of the board. Here to recognize uh, Stanley County uh, EMS medics, uh, our employees. For recent award that we received, uh, first for uh, Stanley County, it's the American Heart Association Mission Lifeline Recognition. Uh, Lifeline EMS Recognition is a program designed to showcase EMS uh, organizations across the nation for excellent STEMI, uh, MIs, care. Pre-hospital personnel are the first providers to care patients suffering from cardiac emergencies. A lot of this work goes in first from our ground crews and our medics for the for the efforts that they put in. Uh, why do we do it? Why do we put this in, in, in this information out there? And, and what's the care about? Lifeline connects EMS providers, referring hospitals, receiving centers, and a coordinated uh, system. The program assists the EMS agencies in getting the feedback needed to understand how the system of care is working and provides evidence-based metrics to measure the system's performance. So a lot to do with our heartbeat. Uh, celebration, uh, a lot of the work that we have done, uh, and it takes a lot of data to put this in there. Um, these gentlemen behind me, Sergeant Lithicum and Sergeant Chandler, is a, is a big part of that, pulling that data together and putting that in there for us. It's measured on four different measures, one with an option. Uh, the first one is, is simply the 12 lead acquisition, uh, putting that heart monitor on them uh, and quickly and recognizing that STEMI. <coughs> the second measure is percentage of hospital notifications or 12 lead EKG transmissions suggesting uh, a STEMI alert. Uh, basically they get there, um, they do their full patient assessment. They get this 12 lead on, they recognize an MA, AMI and transmit all this to the hospital in less than 10 minutes. Uh, measure three, uh, EMS. Uh, FMC to PCI is less than 90 minutes uh, and or EMS FMC to PCI is less than 120 minutes when transported greater than 45 minutes or door to balloon and uh, which is going to the car, uh, cardiac cath lab in less than 30 minutes. Measure four, arrival at STEMI referring hospital uh, in less than 30 minutes or EMS to FMC to PCI uh, the transfer patient in less than 120 minutes, which is pretty remarkable being in this rural area that we're in. The option is per percentage of 12 lead EKGs performed within 10 minutes of the EMS FMC on patients with chest pain, um, symptoms who are, you know, greater than 35 years of age. So uh, we've narrowed that down. This is the first time we've done this and put this data together. Uh, these guys did a great job doing it. We went to the AHA for, for the seminar. We were awarded uh, first for this county for the Mission Lifeline Bronze Award. 
Um, so that's what we want to do is we want to recognize our employees this evening, these two gentlemen here for keeping up with that data, putting it all in, and the first submission of our of ours. And that that's the award that shows there. And that's it. Any questions? Something I would like to add for the um, this award for all those measures, you have to be greater than 75 percent um, each quarter to get the silver award. We missed it by one percent in quarter three of last year from getting the silver award. So it was remarkable for our, by our field staff. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. Thank you. you. Want a picture? I'll come down for a picture. <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Ford, want to join him for a picture? Yeah, let's go. There's a motion to approve the consent agenda from Commissioner Morgan. Is there a second? All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, brings us to public comment. Does anybody would like to speak this evening? I didn't see a sign up sheet. Okay. Anybody to speak? And all right, we'll go to board comment. Uh, Commissioner Lahan. I had the privilege to attend uh, Mara Mountain State Park dedication of some additional land and learned quite a few things there that I didn't know. Uh, found out that Mara Mountain State Park was became a state park in 1935. It's also the uh, third state park that opened in North Carolina and uh, it's a beautiful place that I don't go to often enough. I, took, I had the privilege of taking both my gr two of my grandchildren and they were well behaved and was joined by uh, Commissioner Lane Furr and Commis Commissioner Tommy Jordan and Andy Lucas was there and I appreciate their attendance. Gorgeous day, beautiful place. Thankful for the land that's been given to Mar Mountain. Mr. Jordan. Um, oh, he, 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 he said the good part. Um, <laughs> that was an awesome day. Um, Mar Mountain and the wildlife people were very glad to have us. They, they commented that was, a, I think, the highest turnout they'd had, they'd had in a while, um, at least from us. And uh, on another note, the um, in regards to some of these boards, there's a lot of boards out there that still have openings. Um, we are working, I have worked with uh, County Manager and Andy Lucas trying to, to get a little bit of clarification on the Stanley County website about maybe what some of these positions are and uh, what positions are opened up um, to make it very simple for people to determine when things are available to join. But uh, we've had some comments on social media that there's, uh, not a lot of uh, you know a advertising out there. There's not much that we can do as commissioners or as county government except tell you that they're open. So we're doing that as as the only way we know how on the website, on Facebook, here in these meetings. If you would like to serve Stanley County, 
um, on one of its boards, by all means, just call our county manager's office or go online to standingcountync.gov and fill out the application. <coughs> it literally takes about 15 seconds to let us know that you're interested. And we would love to have some more names to pick from. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jordan. Commissioner Barbie. I congratulate the EMS. Uh, thank you for showing up. It's a great accomplishment. Um, our school system, I think, uh, kind of on a little bit of a holdback with the money. Uh, the governor didn't approve the budget, but uh, anyway, I, I got some good notes about the school system. They, uh, we did have a 2A team, softball team, make the uh, playoffs and won the 2A division. And uh, I guess I'm speaking as a proud grandpa because I had a granddaughter on that team. So uh, congratulations to the West Downey softball team. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Barber. Commissioner Furr. First off, I'd like to say um, about tomorrow mountain, we got the friends of Baden Lake that really, or Baden, that really work hard and give refreshments that day. <coughs> I want to thank them for that. And then also about the EMS, I'm so proud that we've got people that willing to do what they do for us, and I want to thank them all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Furr. Commissioner Ullman. I'd like to echo what Commissioner Furr said and everybody about EMS. You, you, some folks don't appreciate or know what all they do till they show up at your house, so I appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, I'd also like to mention uh, the Civil Air Patrol had an encampment at uh, the Stanley County Airport, and it was really awesome, and a lot of good things going on at the airport. Mr. Morgan. I just echo, Commissioner, all the statements. Thank all you EMS guys and gals for everything y'all do. Thank you. Uh, just a couple comments. Uh, echo the congratulations to the EMS folks. I know you guys do way more than just that, um, but that's what you're being singled out for tonight. So congratulations. And. Uh, um, I know with the CARES program and all of that, and I think you two kind of head that up as well. Um, so I, I really appreciate all that work and um, recognizing the folks in Stanley County that are helping helping our citizens. Um, on a different note, uh, there's an event that I didn't know about in Oakboro. I, I saw it today on um, their um, parks, the parks and recreation page. It's um, it's actually a little uh, RC battle boats, but they were like World War II uh, mock-ups of boats. So you know, if you're um, they're they're there all week during the day, and I think there's one evening this week that they're there at night. Um, that uh, but I I'm going to try and take my boys out there to see that, and I encourage everybody to attend it if uh, if you're available. But without any other comment from the board. Uh, I'll request to recess the meeting until Thursday, July 11th at 5.30 p.m. That's this Thursday. Motion to recess by Commissioner Morgan. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Barbie. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries 7-0. to zero. Thank you all for coming out this evening. <laughs>